Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So on today's episode we're going to look at whether it's worth playing the brand new Hotshot Racing, which hopes to channel classics such as Outrun and Ridge Racer, as well as that lovely low poly style that you might have seen in something like Virtua Racing, although it wasn't a style then was it, it was like top of the range hunky dory tickety boo graphics, while giving tons of online and local multiplayer options, and hopefully mixing up the formula with a couple of surprise game modes. Is this Hot Shots part de or part Stop. Let's find out. In terms of the story then, you may be interested to hear that each player, of which there are eight, has their own story arc. They're not the most fleshed out and are more like a beat-em-up, where you get to the end and it gives you a small story resolution. These little cutscenes were a nice addition though, and made playing through multiple times a little bit more enjoyable. Let's get it out the way nice and quickly. Hotshot Racing is an excellent game. Yes, it's an arcade racer. Yes, it has multiplayer both online, locally through split screen, as well as LAN play over four Switch consoles. There are several different game modes, including Time Trial, Grand Prix, Cops and Robbers, and Drive or Explode, as well as single race options, and all of them again can be played with up to four players, or eight players online. Let's look then first at the Grand Prix mode. Now there are three different difficulty modes, and much in the same way as Mario Kart, these tie to the speed of the game, but they also fundamentally change the way the game plays out. And for me, the game really should be played on the harder or expert difficulty modes, and I'll explain why as we go along. As with any racing game, there's generally a timing gate for getting that perfect boost start. Here you want to be within the yellow area, and I actually preferred this to the Mario Kart style pressing just after two, as it felt, well, a little bit more like an actual racer, revving that throttle before you launch off from the start. So far, so good. As you hit a corner, you'll be drifting around it, and as you do so, there's a fine balance here, as if you go too far, it's gonna slow you down, but just the right amount, it's gonna give you a healthy chunk of boost, which accumulates enticingly at the bottom of the screen, and can be used at any time with the press of a button, as long as you've reached one of the predefined segmented areas. As you launch around the track, you'll be trying to reach these checkpointed gates, with the fundamental aim being to finish in first after three laps. Now let me talk about the slight issue I have. In normal mode, the game speed, for starters, is a little bit slow, which in and of itself isn't an issue, particularly when you consider that the two other difficulty modes get exponentially quicker. The issue I have is that in normal difficulty mode, whether you're slipstreaming behind an opponent to get in front of them, or you're boosting from the front of the pack, or you spin out and begin to move towards the rest of the pack, it doesn't really make any difference. You will catch them up. The game will just drag you back up to the rest of the pack, and you won't be able to escape from them. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you're the best driver in the world, they'll be right on your tail up to the finish line. And in normal mode at least, the only way really of guaranteeing a win was just to save your boost, don't use it at all, wait till you're about 300 yards from the finish line and spam it like it's going out of fashion. The two harder difficulty modes are much better in terms of it allowing you to fall back, but again, when you get in front of the pack, the same scenario takes place. You'll be fighting tooth and nail up to the finish line every single time. And yes, it provides an enjoyable experience, but you can't help but feel like, regardless of how good you are, they're always there, nipping at your heels. <laughs> I just wanted to say nipping at your heels. <laughs> I do very much enjoy the game, and realistically, it's not designed as a solo experience. Where it absolutely shines is in its multiplayer, whether that be online or through split screen, as well as a couple of game modes inspired by some of my favourite classics. I mentioned Outrun at the start, and the game Cops and Robbers is brilliant. And here's how it works. A random player will be selected as the cop at the beginning of the round. The rest of you will be charging along, trying to avoid damaging each other, while also collecting cash from around the track. It's an incredibly tense experience as the police are trying to slam into you, and if your damage reaches full, then you'll be deputized into their ranks. What I really like about this mode though is that it makes losing fun. When you join those police, suddenly you have this new challenge of trying to take out the rest of the team. And if you're the only robber left, it's incredibly exciting, and certainly more so if you're against human AI. I found that the CPUs were always behind you. Didn't matter what you did, they're right there and that rubber banding can feel a touch demoralizing when you're playing like an absolute beast i can't help but feel they need to tweak their ai to some degree as it's just a little bit op as it stands especially when you consider that the game has different classes of vehicle 
So one's faster, one's better at drifting, one has better acceleration, but in practical terms, it ends up making very little difference. As in anything above normal, you're gonna need to have a very good run, collect loads of boost, and still employ to some degree that strategy of saving boost until the end. It's tough, but I'm not gonna lie, it is very exciting. Regardless of which game mode you decide to go for, the game has many tracks on offer. There are 16 different ones, all of which can be played in reverse, as well as eight characters to choose from. You can customize your cars to a degree, but I would have liked a touch more in this area. As you'll see from what's on screen, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of visual shift when you buy these additions, and it made the purchase of them a little bit redundant. More become available as you unlock challenges, which are shown each round. These tick over in the background and provide a slight added incentive to playing, but the real joy just comes from the racing itself, and if you are able to find friends to play with either locally or online, that's where this game shines, and having those leaderboards is where I believe it will have its prolonged life. While not without its flaws, Hotshot Racing is an excellent arcade title, and I'd say it deserves to gain a large online following, particularly with those high score chasers. I myself don't chase high scores, Glenn. I don't care that you're at the top of all the leaderboards, mate. I'm good at magical spells in Divinity, yeah? <laughs> Gameplay scores 16 out of 20. While the controls are excellent, and the addition of motion control, which I haven't actually mentioned yet, is a nice touch. They score 18 out of 20. In terms of the visuals and performance, the game claims to run at 60 FPS, and yeah, it does do that, but there is a touch of micro stutter. As it stands in the pre-release version, if you play in split screen, this is particularly evident, with some very strange moments that look akin to a memory leak, where the game almost stutters along. And that 60 FPS target frame rate, well, you can say goodbye to it when you go four player split screen. And that's fine as long as it keeps its frame pacing, which it tends to do, but you're looking at around about 25 to 30 FPS. Artistically speaking, Lucky Mountain Games have hit the nail on the head, and the real win here are the tracks. They're like a more open version of the one seen in Horizon Chase Turbo. And using your drift mechanic to slam from left to right and just barely thread the needle feels hugely exhilarating. I'm sure after an early patch they'll fix up some of the juddery moments, but the predominantly 60 FPS is a delight delightful little addition, particularly when playing online. In terms of the audio, I'd say they've absolutely nailed the soundtrack for the most part. And small nods to the past, such as the commentator who announces each stage, are a most welcome addition. It's a visceral game and slamming into other cars, drifting round corners or wailing along with your sirens will put a large smile on your face. Some of the tracks have audio that gradually increases in tempo and your heart will be pounding. One or two of the musical score were a touch too repetitive for my liking, but I'd say 9 out of 10, they're just arcade belters. Not Horizon Chase Turbo level, but that came from a legendary composer. So excellent visuals, performance is good, but it needs a tiny bit of work, particularly when you're playing split screen. Visual score 16 out of 20, and the audio is also very good. I'm going to give it an extra point because I do like the additions of the characters' voices from within the vehicles, as well as the fact they've actually bothered voicing them at all. So what do you say we go for a ride? Audio gets 17 out of 20. As far as value goes, Hotshot Racing is an absolute bargain. It's currently £12.79 or your regional equivalent, which is a 20% discount until the 17th. Now its usual price of £16 seems about right, but at 12 quid. I might have to say this is worth adding to the backlog. If you're a racing fan and you're aware of the issues, which are the rubber banding, particularly in the lower difficulty modes, and a few frame drops, then I think you'll be really satisfied with a purchase. Ideally, you'll have online and be able to play with friends or have people within your house to play local co-op, as between that and the high score leaderboards, that's where the long-term appeal is. I do hope the developers add a little more for you to spend your cash on, as right now it's a little thin on the ground, but overall it's a very good game. There's currently no physical, but I think this will be perfect for a limited run. If you're able to get this at the discount, then add a point or two onto this score. Value scores 17 out of 20.
Well, I had hoped Hot Shot Racing would be a decent game, and it is. It's really good, especially online. Hopefully, the developer takes on board what I've said about the artificial intelligence of the computer-controlled players, but still, it's very fun. Modes such as Cops and Robbers, and the excellent Driver Explode where you try and stay at the head of the pack, are what arcade racing is all about. It scores a switch up score of 84%, which incidentally I just went and checked and it's the same score that we gave Horizon Chase Turbo. So that gives you an idea of the type of game we're dealing with. A big thanks to the developers for the review copy and as always to our patrons who support us each and every month. There's been a couple of new ones which is always nice but it's more just about that community. If you want to go join our Discord if you want to find people to play online with with this or any other game then the link will be down in the top comment. And I'll also pop a link to Horizon Chase Turbo if you're trying to decide which racer to pick up. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!